All right, so hello, good morning, guys. Um, I know this is very strange. We've never done this, but I'm gonna try to keep it as similar as we can to our regular class time with these slides, with taking notes. Um, I'm also gonna be posting these slides on Edmodo and YouTube as well. I'm gonna put the link in for you guys all have to have access. Um, I'm also going to be putting in um, additional YouTube videos for you guys to be able to watch at home if you need any additional help. I highly doubt it. This is mostly for view from um, seventh grade um, into genetics itself. I'm sure you guys have talked about them before um, in your previous uh, classes. So I'm also going to be posting two sets of different questions. Ooh, the first set is going to be five questions. They're going to be called discussion questions. These discussion questions are going to be um, due by Thursday. Thursday is our official science online uh, Zoom meeting. So during that time, we're going to be reviewing the questions, um, discussing them as a class, things like that. And our lesson questions that are going to be on Friday, uh, they're going to be due. So make sure you please type them up, send them to me via Edmodo or email in order to get the grade for the week. We're also going to be doing um, C palms. C palms. I'm going to post a link on Edmodo, and everything that you'll need for every single day will also be on Edmodo. So make sure you um, look at that every day in the morning, sometime around this time. So we are going to be talking about reproduction and genetics. Our unit essential question is how are traits passed down from generation to generation, how do dominant and recessive alleles interact to determine the expression of these traits. So if you're going to be going on seed palms, seed palms, um, go on the website, click on standard, then you're gonna type this standard in with the letters and numbers, then you're gonna hit the original student tutorial to view the lesson that they have in addition to having um, questions and things like that that are going to be online for you to be able to get extra help. So for this particular standard, we're going to be exploring the scientific theory of evolution by recognizing and explaining ways in which genetic variation and environmental factors contribute to the evolution by natural selection and diversity of these organisms. So we are going to be looking at observing changes. So we're gonna look at the beginning of time, where this is coming from, how do we know that um, um, that species have changed over time. So suppose you're putting a, beat, a bird feeder outside your kitchen or the classroom window. Um, you enjoy watching birds and gray squirrels come to get a free meal. The squirrels seem to be perfectly skilled at climbing the feeder and breaking open seeds. One day you're surprised to see a white squirrel, like the squirrel um, visiting the feeder. So this new white squirrel and gray squirrel appear to be the same species. So species is a group of similar organisms that can mate with each other and produce offspring that can also mate and reproduce. Um, you would probably have a few questions about why these squirrels are different colors, for example. So this curiosity, um, prompted scientists named Charles Darwin to start getting curious about these differences observed in natural populations. So a variation is any difference between individuals of the same species. Um, some scientists ask how life on Earth got started and how it has changed over time throughout the planet's history. The scientists wondered about what dinosaurs were like and why they disappeared. Darwin um, and others work to develop a theory about evolution. So the process by which these modern organisms have descended from ancient organisms. So remember, the species is just similar organisms. They're able to reproduce with each other, things like that, while a variation is any difference between them. So color, beak size, um, feathers, things like that, while evolution is just um, how these organisms have changed through the course of time. So Linnaeus um, developed this system of classification. So Corellus Linnaeus developed the first scientific system for classifying and naming living things. So Linnaeus collected samples of organisms from around the world when classifying the organisms according to shared characteristics. 
So pretty much he was looking at what do animals have in common? What traits do they have in common? He wasn't really able to explain why it happened, but he was just forming the first class classification system for animals based on traits. So he observed that there is many variations of traits within the same species. He was able to describe the variations and diversity of life, but not explain what caused the variations and diversity. So no one yet was exploring how organisms came to be the way they are. In fact, many people still believe that organisms could appear out of the air as if by magic. So remember, um, during this time, people were extremely religious. Um, so they always believed that animals were just created. Um, so no one really thought that Linnaeus was serious. He didn't really, um, he did not really become very popular during this. So Lamarck um, was also a, another French scientist. His first name is Jean Baptiste was put in charge of a, a museum department of insect and worms. So, which also included all the invertebrates or animals without backbones. So Lamarck devoted himself to learning everything he could about these invertebrates. Unlike Linnaeus though, Lamarck wasn't really affected by describing what the animals look like. Instead, Lamarck attempted to figure out how the organisms came to be. So after much studying, Lamarck developed the first attempt at a scientific theory of evolution. So the big difference is Linnaeus pretty much tried to put everything in a classification um, order of how these species have these different traits, while Lamarck was able or was trying to figure out this evolution aspect of it. So Lamarck's theory of transformation. So Lamarck mistakenly believed that organisms could change during their lifetime by selectively using or not using various parts of their body. So this is the first time that he tried to hypothesize what was going on. So he didn't really, it's very different from what we think today, what evolution is. Just during this time, he thought that animals could decide what they wanted to look like. So for example, if I am a platypus, for example, I would decide whether I wanted to um, have a child with, per se, with a very long beak um, in comparison to a short one, or if I wanted um, very webbed feet or not um, for other organisms. So for example, moles could develop long, strong claws by digging through dirt. So Lamarck hypothesized that if two moles with long claws made it, their offspring would inherit these claws. But in the next generation, the individuals who use their claws would pass even longer claws onto their offspring. In this way, the whole population of moles will gradually grow bigger, stronger claws until they reach the form we see today. So unfortunately, Lamarck's theory of transformation doesn't really hold up when investigated further. His theory doesn't explain how features such as eyes could have developed. Theory also does not um, work when tested with experiments. So for example, if you force a plant to grow sideways, the offspring of the plant grows straight up towards the light. While his theory was not correct though, Lamarck did contribute some important new ideas. First, he suggested that evolution did take place by small gradual steps. But secondly, he did propose that simple organisms could develop over many generations into more complex organisms. So if you look at Lamarck, he was thinking about how these traits are being um, expressed. So he didn't really understand, per se, that these were um, traits that were being passed down from generation to generation, but he did look at... Um, what these traits were changing. So he developed the idea that these traits were being passed down to the um, offspring. So offspring are the, the, ch the children at this point. So Charles Lyles um, did start looking at rocks. So not after Lamarck proposed his ideas, a young lawyer named Charles Lyle, or Lyle began studying naturally formed layers of rocks and fossils. So a fossil is just a preserved remains or traces of an organism that lives that lived in the past. So Leo concluded that these features of Earth had changed a great deal over time. He also stated that the processes that created land features in the past were still um, 
act is. So before Lyle, some people estimated the world was at least 6,000 years old. Lyle and other scientists pushed that estimate back more than 300 million years. Those discoveries set the stage for a theory of gradual evolution over long periods of time. So besides looking at fossils, he was pretty much looking at the rocks also. So he, so most people didn't really think that the earth was very, uh, wasn't made not too long ago. But based on Charles Lyell's rocks, he was able to discover that the earth was a lot older than what humans thought of um, before. Darwin also was looking at um, many different animals in the Galapagos Island. We're going to talk about that. So in 1831, 22-year-old Charles Darwin set out on this five-year trip around the world abroad a British Navy ship, um, the HMS Beagle. So Darwin was a naturalist, a person who has been observing and studies the natural world. The captain of the Beagle wanted someone aboard who could make and record observation as a crew as a crew explored South America. So he was pretty much brought onto the ship to be able to study the diversity of different areas that they were going to travel in South America. So one of Darwin's professors suggested inviting uh, Darwin and thus he was launched into this brilliant career. He's extremely famous for um, all his theories and things like that. So Darwin was surprised to see the diversity of living things he encountered during this voyage. He saw insects that looked like flowers. Um, he also saw armadillos digging insects from the ground. These mass mammals with a leathery shell, uh, leathery shell that looked like a small suit of armor would have been very strange creatures to see. Today, scientists know that Organisms are even more diverse than Darwin thought. Scientists have calculated that there are millions of species on Earth and new ones are being identified all the time. Scientists have no way to estimate how many undiscovered species exist, but they do believe those numbers are very high. So remember, new species are um, accounted for almost uh, every so often, very, very regularly in the scientific community especially in the ocean, right? We haven't looked through all of the ocean. Um, we've only seen a very, very small fraction of what the ocean has to offer. So there's many different species that have not been um, discovered yet. So during the following um, years, decades, we're gonna be able to see that. So on this journey um, aboard the Beagle, Darwin was also able to see the uh, fossils of animals that have died long ago. Some of the fossils he observed confused him though. Um, Darwin found that some of them resemble the bones of living armadillos, for example, that were much larger. So Darwin wondered what had happened to the ancient giant armadillos because the ones that we have today are pretty, pretty small. So over a long period of time, what could the giant armadillo have evolved as these smaller species we see today? So he was pretty much finding these fossils, fossils of these huge animals, huge organisms, and he was wondering um, why they're so familiar to the ones that we have today, just at a different scale. So that's where he really started to think about um, how this evolution of process began to occur. So then he um, went to the Galapagos. So the Galapagos Island are to the left-hand side of South America very close to um, Panama and things like that. So the Galapagos organisms. So the beagle sailed to many different locations and made several stops along the coast of South America. So from what is now from Ecuador on the Pacific coast, the ship traveled west to the Galapagos Island. The ship traveled, um, Darwin observed many different life forms there. He compared these organisms from the Galapagos Islands to organisms that lived everywhere else. So he also compared organisms living on different islands. So as he was traveling in this beagle, um, he was comparing animals from all these different parts of the world. So he was traveling to parts of Australia through Africa. Then he went a little bit of Europe 
then he went all the way around to South America and he started comparing all of these organisms um, that were in the same species. So he was looking at different birds and things like that. Um, Darwin discovered many similarities between the Galapagos organisms that were found in South America. So some of the birds and plants on the islands resemble those on the mainland. However, Darwin also noted important differences between the organisms. You can see differences between islands and mainlands mocking, um, mockingbirds, for example. Darwin became convinced that species do not always stay the same. Instead, he thought species could change and even produce new species over time. So Darwin began to think that the islands, for example, um, the species in these islands might be related to the South American species. After much reflection, Darwin realized the island species had become different from their mainland relatives over time. So he believed that these organisms um, began in South America, but throughout time, they traveled to the Galapagos Island and changed due to something. So he didn't really understand what it was yet or why. He just knew that, or he thought, he hypothesized that they were the same species, but that had changed over time. So I'm actually gonna pause here because um, I'm gonna only do a couple of slides per day, just like I would in regular class. Make sure you're taking notes though, because the notes are gonna be helping you um, answer the lesson check questions, the discussion questions that are going to be due. So remember, um, the discussion questions are due on Thursdays and the lesson check questions are gonna be due on Friday. I'll be posting everything on Moto for you to see every day though. So have a good day and thank you.